Unbelievable. There is time only for fear. A hacker. Historically, movies and TV shows have had a problem showing what coding and hacking is actually like. I think you know what I'm talking about. I'm trying. It's moving too fast. Many filmmakers used to not bother making their scenes accurate. They went with their own idea of hacking that looks exciting and feels intense. They were probably afraid that if they went realistically, they'd end up with something like this. Uh, so I go through these thousands of lines of code and uh, it doesn't really matter. So with a few exceptions, hacking in the 90s and 2000s is either highly exaggerated or incomprehensible. And honestly, I don't blame the filmmakers for making this choice. Watching someone sit at a computer is boring, and the vast majority of moviegoers didn't have a clue how hacking works. Most of them probably didn't care how it worked anyway. But in the last 10 years or so, there's been a big shift in how movies and TV portray hacking. Maybe it's because the public better understands how technology works. Or maybe it's because people want more realistic storytelling. Whatever it is, modern shows like Mr. Robot now have extreme extremely accurate hacking scenes, and even comedies like Silicon Valley put some effort in fact-checking the technology they're making fun of. But even with all this new technical accuracy, there's still a bit of deception going on. Filmmakers still make hacking out to always be this incredibly complicated process that requires a technical genius. You made it really hard for anyone to see it. But I saw it. But in reality, a lot of the hacking you see on the big screen is surprisingly easy. Sometimes it's so simple you don't even need experience to understand it. All you need is an internet connection and a basic understanding of a few vulnerabilities. To prove my point, let's analyze a sequence from the social network and see if you can do some hacking yourself. Let the hacking begin. In this scene, Mark Zuckerberg hacks into websites on the Harvard network and steals pictures of female students for his face mash app. Not only is this scene realistic, but it's hacking that Mark Zuckerberg actually did in 2003. He documented his techniques in an online journal, and some of the dialogue in the movie is taken word for word from it. They keep everything open and allow indexes in their Apache configuration, so a little wget magic is all that's necessary to download the entire Kirkland Facebook. Kid stuff. Based on how he delivers this line and how quickly the moment flies by, the average moviegoer might think that this hacking is only kid stuff for a genius like Mark Zuckerberg. Even screenwriter Aaron Sorkin felt this way. There are scenes in The Social Network, honestly, I don't understand. When he's telling us how he's hacking into things, mm -hmm. that's acquired knowledge, it's phonetic knowledge. But this is probably the easiest hacking out there that I promise you can do, and I'll prove it to you. Go to jacknugent.io slash YouTube mash in your favorite browser. It's a website built like Mark Zuckerberg's face mash site, except instead of comparing girls at Harvard, you can judge all of Now You See It's past videos. Go to the logo in the top left corner and view the image. Every browser lets you do this, but the option just has a slightly different name. Once you're at the page with the image, you just need to remove the name of the image from the URL and you get a list of all the thumbnails from every Now You See It video. And there you have it. You're a hacker like Mark Zuckerberg. That's all that he did. It's true that he was clever enough to check if this website had this configuration, and he also knew about WGET, a package that lets you download all the images on a web page. But this really is kid stuff. You don't need to be a hacking expert to check if an image's location is in a website's public directory. If you try this technique on other websites, it's probably not going to work because most websites have tightened their security since 2003. Even this website is just faking it. As of this video's publish date, apache.org slash icons still indexes images the exact same way that Zuckerberg exploited. If you want to see Apache indexing in the wild. Excellent. Moving right along. Later in the scene, Mark needs to quickly get a large stash of photos for face mash, so he writes some code to do it. At a time, and there's no way I'm going to go to 500 pages to download pics one at a time, so it's definitely necessary to break out Emacs and modify that Perl script. He's solving a simple problem. It would take too long to manually go through every page and download the thumbnails. Instead, he writes a few lines of code that repeat the process we just went through for every page on the site. Not so complicated if you think about it. If you wanted to do this on the jacknugent.io slash YouTube mash site, the random video button gives you a random thumbnail. You could go through all the URLs for each video and do the same thing he did. I'm doing it with slightly different code, but it's still the same idea. And now that you've got all the images, it's time to make face mash. I need the algorithm. The word algorithm is usually abused in movies to make something instantly sound epic. All I did was come up with my own kick-ass algorithm to sneak in. But an algorithm is simply a step-by-step -step solution to any problem. It's an equation, it's code, or it's even a recipe for making food. The algorithm for face mash is copying what chess players use to calculate their ratings. Let's say The Matrix A Different Perspective has a rating of 1600, and Why Jump Scares Suck has a rating of 1200. The score just tells us the likelihood that a video will win in any given matchup. The higher a video's ELO, the more likely it is to win. Because The Matrix video has a higher rating, it's expected to win 90 
90% of the time, and the jump scares video is expected to win 10% of the time. Depending on who wins, another algorithm adjusts each video's score. If a video wins that isn't expected to win, the algorithm adjusts its score more drastically, because the video's current score is apparently too low. Each video starts with a rating of 1400, and the algorithm takes it from there. These equations are the exact same way chess players get their ELO scores, and it's the same way Mark Zuckerberg ranked women on their attractiveness. And now I'm using the same algorithm to find out what you really think of Now You See It videos. The social network is an example of the current trend to make hacking in movies and TV more accurate, but at first glance, the movie still portrays hacking as incredibly complicated. It only feels that way because they make the dialogue really fast, and throw in software jargon like Apache, WGET, and Emacs, and then all of a sudden, it feels like you have to be a genius to understand it. But you can do that with anything related to technology. I can do the same thing with my YouTube MASH website. Spin up a static site? Easy. I'll just create an S3 bucket underneath the CDN surface with SSL encryption. Then all I have to do is generate pages and Gatsby for lightspeed performance, and automate deployment with a GitLab CI algorithm. Kid stuff. All that is just a fancier way of saying, I made a website. Of course, not all hacking is as easy as what they did in the social network, but filmmakers don't seem to differentiate the simple from the difficult. So the next time you see an insane hacking scene that makes no sense to you, don't forget that you can still hack like Mark Zuckerberg. Welcome to Facebook. <laughs> Hacking in movies and TV has become more realistic, at least partially due to an increase in computer literacy. The average person knows more about computers than ever before, and our entertainment reflects that. It's never been easier to learn how to build a website, or exploit the faults in one. You can learn how to make websites using YouTube, Stack Overflow, or there's a great tutorial by Christopher Todd called Understanding Web Development. It's an incredibly well-explained introduction to the basics of making your own website from scratch. If you want to check out this video, you can view it on Skillshare. Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that can help you learn and grow, even with a busy schedule. Classes cover every topic, from film production to coding. So if you're interested in diving deeper into what I discussed today, it's the perfect resource to get started. So now that you know how to hack like Mark Zuckerberg, you can learn how to code like him too. But don't worry, you don't have to afford a Harvard education to get there. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month, and the first 500 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Plus, it helps us out too. Thank you guys so much for watching and getting this far in the video. I thought of the idea for this video over the summer, but I put it on the back burner because I was worried it didn't really fit the style of the channel. I was able to make the video I wanted to make because you guys were there supporting the channel the whole time. We wanted to make an interesting, weird video, and if you guys also think it was interesting and you want to see more videos like this, then support us on Patreon. There you can get early access to videos, shoutouts in the credits, and a behind-the-scenes look at our script process. So support us on Patreon or let me know on Twitter or YouTube if you liked this kind of video, and hopefully we can make more of them. Thanks for watching.